All right, everybody. Hello and welcome as always. I am Sean. This is In The Mixer. Welcome to episode three of our Atletico Madrid save in the FM beta. We've started on this screen and we're going to transition pretty much to our regular in-game screen because while I was loading this up, I noticed that it actually updates the player names for the, who you've got in the squad. And they did mention that there were going to be different kits and change rooms and stuff that you're going to see depending on where your save was, depending on what you're up to, how many years you've been there, all that sort of stuff relating to like key players and things like that as well. Um, but we've actually even got like the new guys that we've brought in. Grimaldo's here, Robert's there. There's a couple of others as well that were signed this most recent off season. So it's just really interesting to see that. And I just want to kind of touch on those little details as we see them. But there's been a tremendous amount that has happened since the last episode. There was the end of the transfer window. We didn't have any late additions, nothing that you guys didn't see in episode two. Uh, we also started our Champions League campaign and we continued our La Liga campaign as well. We're still undefeated, four straight wins to open the season. Uh, we're currently in second spot behind Real Madrid, who are smacking teams as well. They're on plus 11 goal difference. We're on plus 10, all on 12 points, as is Villarreal back there, but they've only got plus 7 goal difference. So still quite a few teams that are doing very, very well. Barcelona has, of course, lost to us early in the season, that fantastic 3-0 victory that we had in episode 1. No, episode 2. Apologies. And then since then, we had a 4-3 win over Levante. We actually went 4-1 up, and they brought some goals back late in the second half. And then we beat Leganes 5-1 away from home. An excellent performance. And Ajao Felix with a hat-trick there, his first for the club. Uh, and then a 1-1 draw with Benfica. A little bit frustrating, this one, because we were on top for the majority of the game. I made a whole bunch of different subs for the two games we're going to play in this episode, and they pulled one very late goal back between... Andrea Zivkovic. I can't remember actually who got the assist, but it was the assist run that was very frustrating because uh, he basically picked the ball up from inside his own half, ran all the way forward, put the cross in, and it was an easy tap home for the equalizer. So we are still undefeated in that competition. I think we are still sitting second in the group. PSG won their game first round. Oh, did we even show that part last time? We've drawn PSG, Benfica, and Istanbul Basheka this year. I have got the uh, update for real names and things like that in it. So... Besekis here, but I'm going to butcher that pronunciation. Let's just call him Istanbul for the time being. But a good group. We should still expect to get through. Like, I think we can beat Benfica. I think we can do well against PSG, and we should beat Istanbul as well and be able to get out of the group stages. In this episode, of course, we're going to go through Real Sociedad and Granada, our two September games, and then we've got some massive fixtures coming up in October. We'll talk about them at the end, but realistically, we might have in the next episode a massive fixture against Real Madrid, our top of the table clash, and then hopefully the game against PSG as well. But more than enough talking from me, let's jump straight into the game against Sociedad now. And these are the two lineups that we're going with. We're playing, of course, our 3-2-3, three, three, or if you want to call it like a 4-3-3 three, three in possession, really, once the two wingbacks actually join in the attack. Uh, Hermoso, Savage, and Jimenez have played as the central mid, sorry, central defensive partnership uh, pretty much all the games we've had so far, and we haven't really lost yet, so we're going to continue with that. Grimaldo will come in as the left wing back out signing from Benfica in the offseason. Uh, we'll move Renal Lodi back to the bench, though he has been excellent and really unfortunate to be moving back there. Trippier will continue at right wing back. It's going to be a while before uh, Vasalko is actually back in the squad, so really he's going to hold that in that position until then. Saul and Koke, who have been excellent in midfield. Jao Felix as the inside forward on the left. Vitolo's coming in on the right-hand side. Thomas Lamar has an injury. He's out for about three weeks, I think. Uh, and Diego Costa leading the line up top. We haven't had much out of Alvaro Morata yet, but he has only been limited to like substitute appearances. We will probably have to rotate the two of them at some point to keep them both happy now that we're playing a single striker system, but it hasn't come up yet. They're playing a 4-2-3-1, a couple of players to keep out for. Alexander Isaac, who for years and years was a massive wonder kid uh, when he was like 16, 17. Been around a couple of different clubs now. Um, AIK was where he initially came through in that wonder kid status in FM. Been at Dortmund for a few years, out on loan now, and then signed by Sociedad, who are picking up some good young talent. Yazabal is another one to keep an eye on. You can see here, 81 scout summary as of his rating. Good Spanish number 10. It looks to be a quality player and definitely one with high potential if you're trying to pick up that sort of player in your save. The Yaramendi's there. Raul Lorente's there. Nacho Monreal moved there. Like, there's quite a few good players and that should give us a bit of a test today. Passionately, we're going to tell everybody where the favorites here. Go out there and give these fans a performance cheer for and I'm just going to assertively tell the defense that I have faith in them just to continue getting them a boost We've been scoring freely. We've been defending okay. Uh, given that goal difference is already incredibly important, if we can continue to keep clean sheets, we're going to do very well this season. Old Black's coming out of his box, which is just one of those little differences that I've seen this season with the sweeper keeper. The highlight continues. 
If balls falls to Grimal, though, can he get a decent ball in? Deep one towards Vitolo, and we've gone a goal up inside 31 seconds. The second goal of the season for him. He's done very, very well since coming in as that inside forward on the right-hand side. We're going to check this one out in three dimensions and kind of watch what happened for the defending. So I'll do it just, it's a poor cross away and then no one follows up to go to Grimaldo once he recovers the ball. He just hangs it back post and it's a good header from Fadola to be fair. It does well to get it back across the goal and the goalkeeper moving across can't keep it out. So an excellent, excellent start this episode. Free kick now, Janazaj to take or Janazai. Elastundo, Vitolo's won it back now. We do have a 2v2 if he can find the right pass. It's a good tackle by Monreal. Trippier should recover. Crossfield switched towards Jao Felix, headed away but only as far as Saul into Diego Costa. Out to Trippier again. Can he find the right ball in? Square one to Vitolo, who gets his strike away. I think it hit the post before it was scrambled away by the defense. But he was offside, and we give the ball back. Grimaldo recovers here to Hermoso. Back to Savic. Long ball over the top. Diego Costa should get in behind. Can he find the finish? He goes for a chip, and Moya read it very, very well. Throw in now. Trippier finds Vitolo. Plays inside to Costa. Got a man on the outside in Trippier. Now can we find the right ball inside? Squared up now, can okay, fall back out to Koke, saw at the top of the box, curls one from range, and his first goal of the season is an excellent, excellent finish. And let's check that one out in three dimensions. That curl on it in the 2D above view looked fantastic. We'll see if it stands up in three dimensions. So it's Trippier goes on a run forward, they do get the ball, oh no, Trippier very well pulls it back to Koke, and then saw once he gets his head up, curls that one on his left foot, not his favoured foot, around the goalkeeper, who couldn't really do too much about that one. And we go two goals up inside 10 minutes. It's been end-to-end -end as far as 10-minute action's concerned. I've had games this season where we've had less highlights in 90 minutes than what we've already had in the early part of this one. And it would see us go top of the division, albeit with Real Madrid still yet to play their game this week. And I oh know they're currently losing. Who are they playing? 1-0 down to Valencia, away from home. Janazar with a goal. Oh, no, sorry, a deep free kick. Johnny goes all the way back to Moya in goal. He's taking his time. Clearance is away. Vitolo should bring it down. It's pinballing around there. Monreal eventually gets a ball down the line to Johnny, who's gotten in goal offside first time. And I think he shot from that angle, which was a really disappointing ball. He had people on in the six-yard box if he had have put that ball across. All right, we get into half time, 2-0 to the good. Been an excellent performance so far. 10 shots, 5 on target, 51% of the ball. They've had 3, 1, and 49%. Nothing to complain about, so I'm just going to calmly say, very happy with the way things are going. And everyone's responded positively to that. As we always do, we will give it 15 minutes or so, and then we will go and have a look at subs and fitness and cards and all that sort of stuff. They've made a halftime sub, brought on Wonder Kid. Oh, we'll go through that in a second. Diego Costa comes into the box. It's going to fall out to Vigia Felix again. Now to Costa. Cuts it back to Saul. Out to Grimaldo. Can we get the right ball in? Squared to Costa again. Can he cut it back? Grimaldo cuts it back to Saul, gets a strike away, gets a second time of asking. It pinballed around there, and Vitolo was the man in the end who got the strike on goal and beat Moya at the near post. The second goal of the game for him. And I think third goal in like two or three games. It's a little bit scrappy. We do get tackled a couple of times in here, but still managed to keep recovering. And then it's Saul's deflected shot that falls to Vitolo, and it's an excellent finish to get his body right and poke that one home. And we go 3-0 up. Deep ball from Koke now. Vitolo again with the header. He's hit the crossbar and it's scrambled away by Ilya Aramendi. As I was saying, Martin Odegaard has come on. Still a wonder kid. Still looks decent-ish. Hasn't quite hit the heights that I think were expected of him when he first made his debut. I don't know if he's permanently at Sociedad now or if he is still on loan from Real Madrid. Crossfield switch out now to Koke. Deep ball back towards Trippier. We're retaining possession a little bit better this episode than we have previously. Jimenez now. Crossfield switch towards Hermoso. It's a dangerous place to uh, try that crossfield switch, but he's done it well. Hermoso into Saul. Good triangles here. Got an overlapping run now from Grimaldo. Cuts back to Saul. Crossfield switch over to Trippier. Into Vitolo again. Back to Trippier. Working this combination well. Into Vitolo. Gets his strike away. Hits the post and then scrambled away again. He's on for his hat trick. And we've got another highlight here. I just want to make my subs. Grimaldo. Ball forward. It's going to come to Willian. Crossfield switch. It's a good ball out to Janazai. He gets towards goal. Gets the strike away. But Oblak does very well to push that one around the post. And I won't see how this corner plays out before we make the subs. Janazai to take. Away early by Hermoso. Comes out to Odegaard. Cuts it back to Lorente. All the way back to Yaramendi. Now Marino in midfield. Go, ball goes back. Monreal into the corner again. Finds Janazai there. Very similar to how they won the corner. Cuts back to Odegaard and he has pulled a goal back. Second goal of the season for him. Coming off the bench. 
We've got two yellow cards that I'm most concerned about. So I'm going to bring on Felipe for Hermoso and Lodi for Grimaldo. And there's a couple of players that are struggling a little bit, only on 6.8 match ratings, but I'm going to hold off until the last 10 minutes. And we're also going to, once those subs go through, use our Get Creative Shout to try and get back our three goal advantage. Balling behind Diego Costa, and it's an excellent finish. Grimaldo's going to come off, but that was a lovely way to pass him behind for him. And Diego Costa's sixth goal of the season in about the sixth game that he will have played in. It's a good ball out to Grimaldo early. He gets out very, very quickly. He's, a he's effectively a winger, the way that he plays. Diego Costa, lovely touch, gets it back on his right foot and smacks that one past the goalkeeper to return us to three goal advantage and 4-1 in the fixture. I'm going to proceed with those tactical changes and use our get creative shout. Deep free kick here to be taken by Odegaard. Towards Raul Llorente, Renan Lodi clears it. It was going out for a goal kick. Deep ball in again. Marino with the header. That one was closer to the goal than the initial one, and no one seemed to panic. Goal kick now. Ball forward out to Trippier. It's a well way to pass. Long ball over the top. Costa should get in behind again. Can he find the finish? Lorente squares it back. Pinballing around. Comes out to Renan Lodi. And I'm not sure what that highlight was all about because nothing happened. 10 minutes remaining. They've recovered the ball in midfield. Iaramendi at the base. Iazabal, who hasn't done too much after we spoke about him in the build-up to the game. Janazar's gotten in behind a couple of times behind Trippier now. And again from a wide area, he goes for the shot instead of the cross and it hits side Denny, never really troubling the goal. Throwing now, Trippier to take. Vitolo back out. Lorente into Koke. Deep cross if he can go for it. Instead he goes back, plays a one-two pass with Koke again. Does it a third time. Saul into Vitolo, finds Diego Costa at the top of the box. He's the only one willing to shoot sometimes and it was a good strike, a good save and a good follow-up from Jao Felix. It's pushed away again, back into Vitolo. Janazar now, Iozabal, he's their first real counter of the match. We're going to see any more of it. They cut it back to Janazar at the top of the box. The strike hits his own player. Now he's facing the wrong direction, heading back towards goal. Odegaard, and he puts it out for a throw-in effectively. So 10 minutes remaining. We've got a highlight again here. End to end, not end-to-end -end highlights, but just endless highlights throughout the course of this game. Old Black with the ball, out to run and Lodi. Inside to Saul. Crossfield switch towards Vitolo. We've got a 2v1 if we win the header. Trippier on the overlapping run now. Deep ball across towards Jao Felix. It's an excellent ball and an excellent finish for his fifth goal of the season. The Wonder Kid is playing very, very well at the moment. It's a great ball from Trippier. It looked like a little daisy cutter straight across midfield. Vitolo does well here. Wins the little flick on header. Trippier makes a good overlapping run. And then, yeah, he just puts that daisy cutter across the really the penalty spot area. And first time asking on his wrong foot, Jao Felix... Excellent, excellent finish. 10 minutes remaining, we're going to use our demand more shout just to try and give everyone some focus through to the final whistle. And there's three minutes to be added on. Now, one of the things that I have been seeing is no highlight to show me when the game finishes. So it just ends kind of abruptly. 5-1 in the end, excellent performance. 24 shots, 13 on target, 52% possession. 12-4 and 48% for Sociedad. And we're going to assertively tell everyone, very happy with the result and the way that you played. Real Madrid lost 3-2, so they drop off from top spot. It does see us moving to first position, though Villarreal is the other team that has won five straight, and they had a pretty... Where are they? Decent win, 4-0 over RCD Mallorca. And Vitolo with an excellent performance and two goals gets a 9.4 match rating. So we'll go and do the post-match press conference. Uh, Sol's calling girl, it was a magnificent strike. Grimaldo had a great game, he was very good. Uh, we're spotting the crowd talking about Jose Jimenez isn't going anywhere. He's fantastic. So far in the Liga, 100% record. We're doing very well. And let's praise Vitolo's performance as well. Superb. Lampard spotted. And Atletico Madrid have now won five on the trot to start the season, which is an excellent way to go. Magic of editing. We're going to jump forward to the game against Granada now. All right, so we're going with one change in our lineup. Renan Lodi is going to come in for Grimaldo. Grimaldo was excellent last time out, but he's only sitting around 74, 75% match fitness. So we're just going to try and keep that going. Everyone else is absolutely fine. So it's unchanged in that respect. They're playing a four, like a weird 4-4-1-1 four, four, one, one with two defensive midfielders, which is very interesting. There aren't a tremendous amount of players that I actually recognize. So let's just look at their two up front. Antonio Puertes is going to play as the 10. He doesn't look too bad. But doesn't look too great either. Nothing to be massively concerned about. And then Carlos Fernandez, 23-year-old Spanish forward. So the reason I wanted to play the game against Granada, they're actually kind of like half part of the City football group. And they absolutely beat the living piss out of Melbourne City in a preseason friendly last year. And they were phenomenal in that match. But there's no one here that's jumping out at me as being like particularly magnificent. They've got Rui Silva in goal, who's not a bad goalkeeper. But we'll see how we go. 
I'd like to keep our 100% record intact. I'm not under any illusions that we're going to go undefeated or anything like that, but I did think potentially Granada might be a bit more of a banana skin than they are actually looking from their lineup. But we still have to beat our best to beat them, and they're not going to give us anything for free. Unlike last episode, we get outside the first 10 minutes without scoring three or four goals or watching an entire run of highlights. So definitely not one for the faithful. You might be able to hear it in the background. I've got a new microphone. I don't know how sensitive it is. It's bucketing down with rain in Melbourne today, which is fine. We need it. But I'd much rather be in sunny Madrid. 30 minutes, we're going to use our Get Creative shout. And first highlight of the game, Trippier with a throw-in. KK recovers in a good area and plays it across the soil. Out to Ren and Lodi, who can make an overlapping run or reset through the defense again. Goes back to Koki at the base of midfield. Hermoso, Saul, finds Ren and Lodi's overlapping run. Into Jao Felix, back to Saul again. Good ball across to Trippier. Can he find the right cross in towards Diego Costa and his header is just over the bar. One minute to be added on and we just go straight to halftime. So we've had it statistically. 11 shots, only one on target is the disappointment. 61% possession. They haven't had any shots. They're only on 39%. So we are on top. We might just calmly say... Keep playing the way you have been and the result will come. There's no need to get down on anybody. We just need to find the back of the net. Trippier with the throw in here. Forward to Diego Costa. Trippier deep ball across. Yeah, Felix is the only one in the box. Cuts it back around and load. He can't get the strike away. He does. It's deflected. It did hit Rui Silver on the way through, but we managed to get that first goal. Lodi has been absolutely excellent. I looked at him as someone that I thought was a bit weak in our lineup and identified the wing back spot as an area that we really needed to improve. But his performances have just, like, they've been so much further ahead of where his stats are. And it's a good strike. Does very, very well. And I think that's, like, his fourth goal of the season. Throwing now with the goal scorer, Lodi. Ball forward. Someone's gone down. It was definitely outside the box. I think it was. There's two players in there. I think it's Saul and Jao Felix. And Costa was hanging around in the back. And again, my life is basically just watching the referee run to and from the VAR booth at this point. Comes back out. He's going to give away a free kick. No, he says it's a penalty. So, Diego Costa will take. Have a chance to add to his tally. Deep breath. Straight at the goalkeeper. And Silva just stands strong. And uh, manages to push that one away. So, not sure what happened for us to win it. But it was pretty poorly taken. We might actually look to mix up our penalty take up in the future. Tactically, let's have a look. We haven't done much with Alvaro Morata. So, we'll bring him on given the amount we're paying for him. Koke's got a yellow card as well, so we'll bring on the red tape just to keep an eye on that one. We've scored while I've been making subs, which ha seems to be a recurring theme. And I guess we're going to check it out in three minutes. Oh, hang on, wait. It's going to VAR. No, they've delayed it since goal side. Uh, sorry, for offside. Subs have gone through now. We're going to use our Get Creative Shout as well. We've got a highlight here. Trippier with the ball inside to Sauer. Saul Sauer. I say it differently every time. I can hear myself doing it. I'll eventually get into a rhythm. Just keeping the ball between midfield. Good pass into Lodi. Can he find the right pass in? Hangs it back stick towards Vitolo, who's had an excellent, excellent episode. Fourth goal of the season for him. And, like, really, I don't know who Vitolo is. I don't know Spanish football as well as I know the Premier League uh, or the A-League or anything like that. Just really the big stars. But Vitolo is just proving to be a very tidy little player and kind of justifying us getting rid of Angel Correa. Fourth goal of the season for him. Excellent ball across from Ron Lodi again, who's been excellent this season. Trippier, ball across to Laurenti. Deep, deep cross towards Ren and Lodi. Can he find a ball back in? He goes down on the edge of the area. It's definitely not a penalty, but Victor Diaz is being called over by the referee. And usually when you show this portion, it means there's a card incoming. Is it yellow or red? And he's been shown a straight red card, which is very, very rough. They're going to change their shape a little bit. And we're very much on top, but I would like to see us put the foot down a little bit and try and boost our goal difference. 10 minutes remaining. We're going to use our demand more shout. And everyone seems focused after that, which is good. But really, I'd like us to put the ball in the back of the net a couple more times. Four minutes to be added on. We've got a corner here. And Jimenez has managed to put that one home. Rui Silva goes to pick the ball at the back of the net. And we're getting... Is that going to get ruled out of something? Everything looks weird about it, but they've let it go. Lodi with a deep ball in. Jimenez front stick run. It hits Rui Silva again. Vitolo was in the area, probably in an offside position. But... Had nothing to do with the ball going in the back of the net. 92nd minute now. Long ball forward. Trippier should recover. Lorente to Jimenez. Back to Lorente again. Out to Saul. Now Trippier on the overlapping run. Can he get a good cross in the box? It's a very, very deep one over to Renan Lodi. Can he get to the byline? Deep one, back stick. It's headed away. Tay with the ball now. To Marchis. Back to Montoro. 
After Aziz's first time, we've really had to call out any of the ground players' names. It's a long ball forward, but Old Black will tidy up without any issue. Ball forward to Savage now. Out to Ren and Lodi. We've got a 2v1 if we work it correctly on this side. Great crossfield ball towards Vitolo and an excellent finish from Vitolo. Two doubles for him in this game. Just what a squad player. Like, what more could you want? It's an excellent ball there from Savage just to split the play as quickly as possible. It's tough for Granada to try and rotate that quickly, get their defensive structures right. And then that ball across to Vitolo is absolutely fantastic. And so is the finish, to be fair. Takes a good touch, moves himself into the 18-yard box, smacks it past the goalkeeper, and very quickly we move to 4-0. And then there you go, the, ref, the game just ends. 33 shots, 11 on target, 58% possession, an excellent performance. They had one, none on target, and 42%. And we're going to tell everybody, very happy with the result and the way that you played. Does see us consolidate our position at the top of the table, but Barcelona have been smashing teams. Real Madrid have been smashing teams as well, so goal difference is definitely going to come down to it, but it's good early doors to at least have that three-point buffer on them in case anything goes wrong. Post-match press conference, complete performance, very happy. Uh, Run and Lodi was fantastic, still only 21 as well. I'm a big advocate for technology if it's used correctly, and let's praise Run and Lodi's performance. Three assists in that game, that's phenomenal. Lampard again, just coming to watch my players. If he's not watching him and as he's watching Thomas Lamar, who's currently injured. But very, very strong. Doing really, really well so far. I think what we're going to do is definitely jump forward a little bit and come. For, we'll play Mallorca off screen. We'll play the Istanbul game in the Champions League off screen. We'll play Valladolid off screen and come back for the massive derby against Real Madrid and then the Champions League fixture against PSG. So that does bring us to the end of episode three. We're very quickly getting through the season. I'm really enjoying it so far. So I'm going to try and get as many episodes out as quickly as humanly possible, particularly for the beta save. Our schedule, we don't really have like a formal schedule at the moment. I'm trying to get an episode out each day, Monday to Friday, but it will drop off at certain points throughout the course of the year. So we'll probably have two or three a week once we get into the full version of the game and our ongoing series, FC Isle of Man. But for now... Enjoy me getting them out as quickly as humanly possible. Uh, our Spanish word of the day is El Jugador del Escuadrón. I'm probably butchering all of that pronunciation, but it means the squad player because we've had Tolo come in and be excellent. We've had Ren and Lodi come in and be excellent, and they deserve some representation in this. Uh, so at next episode, going to be massive playing the game against Real Madrid, our first Madrid derby of the series so far, and we definitely want to get bragging rights in that one and maintain our lead at the top of the table. And then also a phenomenal fixture, a real massive clash of the Titans in the Champions League against PSG, who definitely are one of the best teams in the game this year. If you are enjoying the series, feel free to chuck a like on it. You can also subscribe to the channel if you want to be kept up to date on videos as soon as they're released. Or if you look at the socials just over to the left of me now, you can uh, either follow me on Twitter or follow us on Twitch or do whatever it is that you feel like doing. More than anything though, thank you so much for watching. That's the part that means the most to me. And as always, I've been Sean and I'll see you guys again in the mixer.